All right, here we go. This process, it doesn't, uh, it's not, a, it's not a discrete process, meaning it's not in steps. So don't let the numbers fool you. That's rule number one about this. Uh, the stellar evolution is continuous. So it doesn't, it doesn't go from blue white and then it's white and then it's orange and then it's red and it just appears that way you know, overnight. It doesn't do it like that. It's a very slow, steady process and these are just, you know, generalizations of where the star might be in a specific stage of evolution. So to begin, blue giants, uh, blue and white giant stars, white stars, yellow ones, and orange ones, yellow ones like the sun, they don't have cores formed yet. They don't have iron cores formed yet. They're too hot. As well, there is no chemical differentiation, meaning the chemicals aren't exactly formed yet <clears throat> in large scales, so there's no differentiation. They can't, they can't sort themselves out yet because there's nothing, they're, they're too hot. The strong chemical synthesis reactions begin at white stages, and then they start speeding up during yellow star stage, which is in the sun, strong chemical bonds begin forming. And then you have uh, more chemicals bond chemical bonds forming around the orange dwarf stage. And in step six here, <clears throat> we have the global magnetic field begins dominating all the sunspots. And this is a red star. There's still no chemical differentiation in the center and the core will begin growing. This is when the core begins growing. Mind you, it's really, 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 really tiny. After that, you have the cores forming and growing, which is it starts at the red dwarf stage, and then it goes to brown dwarf, and you have a thick helium and hydrogen atmosphere still, and the core begins growing still. There's no chemical differentiation. After brown dwarf stage, when it's cool enough to allow the chemicals to start differentiating themselves, all the material will fall inward. So you'll have hydrogen, helium, ammonia, and the hydrogen compounds. You'll have silica and alumina compounds, and all these are super critical, meaning they're really, really, really hot and really pressurized. But they're mostly undifferentiated in there. But it begins differentiating by their weights and by the properties. So this is when things start get to get really interesting inside of late stage brown dwarfs such as Jupiter. And then you have your gray dwarf stage. This is when the iron and nickel core is fully developed. And all the material around it, the supercritical fluids, the silicon and aluminum compounds, and su supercritical oxygen and nitrogen compounds surrounding that. And obviously you have your hydrogen and helium on the outside still. And then you have the stages where the cores begin cooling, which means the star will be a lot colder on the outside. And that's what we find in Neptune. They won't radiate as much anymore as the Jupiter stars did and the gray dwarfs did. So you have these apparent, apparent uh, cool outer regions because the, the, core, the core is beginning to cool. And then that's when the surface of the new Earth starts beginning to form in the center. Uh, that, that would be the crust. And you have your supercritical water, hydrogen uh, compounds, nitrogen, oxygen and your ammonia and methane at the very top, and obviously it gets pressurized as more and more you go in there, so it probably does some weirdly weird stuff. And these are the stages where you have, you know, things forming like diamonds and stuff which rain down on the interior of the star and deposit into the uh, core regions. You know, we can find those later on. So we can tell how pressurized they are uh, by how deep the diamonds were inside that star. Uh, we can We can figure out how thick the atmosphere was by setting diamonds, which is really cool. And then you have the really interesting part, which is when things get really, really complex. You have rocks and minerals begin growing and experiencing the rock cycle. So this is when the uh, rocks begin forming. So you have the surface of the new earth and all the crystals begin growing right on the surface inside the crust and inside of caves and all that stuff as the caves form. So the majority of the water, or no, the majority of the crystals like granite and other types of crystals and quartz and corundum and stuff like that those those crystals are growing right here and they rain down on the interior of it and mind you 
This is still a bit liquid, it hasn't formed a solid surface yet. It's still uh, lava. Um, but uh, it's interacting with the very, very, very thick oceans. This is the ocean world stage, and obviously you have methane and ammonia in the very top regions. And then you have much, much, much later on uh, the great oxygenation event when the oxygen begins, begins dominating the atmosphere. And it becomes eventually, you know, like Earth, where all this material is ripped away. Oh, and another thing, too, is obviously these aren't to scale. If they were to scale, you'd be zooming in for each specific stage. Uh, this inner region right here would be the same diameter as this outer region right here. And this region right here where the water is would be on the interior of that little ring right there, roundabouts. And as well, also keep in mind that we have uh, photo evaporation taking place. So say if a Jupiter would be orbiting a very hot yellow star or a blue and white star or a white star, the outer atmosphere would be ripped away a lot quicker, which means that the core wouldn't be as big as you, know, you would want it to. So obviously there's going to be bigger and smaller Earths to say mega Earths or super Earths or something like that. And depending on how long a stage in this stage where the cores are forming and growing will determine how large the planet is. And we can determine if it was a hot Jupiter in the past by measuring uh, the thickness of the core by taking geo, uh, geo measurements of any uh, waves going through the entire body. But that, that's really advanced stuff that's uh, going to be a bit beyond this talk. I just want to make sure that people understand that it's not discrete steps, it's continuous, this is continuous, and it is not like this, it's not like this is all the, the mathematicians would delight in something like that, but that's not how nature works. Nature does things in smooth, continual, continuous uh, uh, methods, I guess, I guess that's a word for it. All right, well, I guess that sums it up. Hopefully uh, this helps out. I think I'll go ahead and scan this and put it in a paper. And so I could save it, maybe put it on Vixa for future reference so I don't lose it. All right, y'all, today is June 16th, 2016. Have a good day.